that, we're going to bring on our next uh, group of guests. But before we do, I'm going to play a video that uh, just introduces uh, their cause. It's Give to the Max. It's on November 14th. That's a Thursday. And it's basically, they're going to explain it more, but it's one day of fundraising uh, for their organization. And what they do is they help animals in need, dogs and cats. Uh, that uh, are abandoned or are uh, injured or ill, and they find homes for them right here in Minnesota. So, Dallas, if we can line up uh, this video and uh, we'll get that played. Rescue and Services began in 2006 with the mission to help dogs that were otherwise overlooked and left behind. It began with the first two dogs, Candy and Cookie, and it continues today with the 450 animals in our system. We've spent over $350,000 last year alone providing rescue, refuge, and rehabilitation to these wonderful and deserving companion animals. But now we need your help. We need your help in supporting our mission of caring for these unwanted, overlooked, and left behind dogs. To provide them with the resources they need at a second chance at life. To provide them the opportunity to shine and be the amazing companions they so desperately desire to be. We are in the process of looking for dollars to rebuild our medical fund, which we have named after Bert, a very special dog. Hi, my name is Chad Burgess and I'm the Director of Volunteer Services for Midwest Animal Rescue. I want to thank you for considering, Midwest, uh, considering Mars for a donation today um, on Give to the Max Day. This Give to the Max, we are focusing on a very special fund. All the proceeds from Give to the Max will be going to the BERT Medical Fund. BERT came to Mars uh, just under five months old in October 2012. Mars was able to find out that BERT was diagnosed with bilateral renal dysplasia and uh, was given the optimistic prognosis of living until he was 10 months old. He stayed with us until he was 14 months old. BERT had the type of personality that would fill the room. BERT always wanted to run, wanted to play, and always wanted to do things on his own terms. When we first found Bert, was So that's a little bit of uh, the first uh, video, and I have some folks here from uh, Mars, and uh, thank you for joining us here on the show. And I'll just let you guys introduce each other one by one to the uh, audience. Rick? Yep. Um, Start with you, Rick. Sure. My name is Rick Paulson. I'm the CFO of Midwest Animal Rescue. I'm Chad Burgess. I'm the Director of Volunteer Services. I'm Amanda Swenson, and I'm the Practice Manager of Green Vet Services. So, uh, Rick, can you talk a little more about uh, Midwest Animal Rescue Services and what you guys are, where you're located, and your sure. mission? Sure. Um, Midwest Animal Rescue, uh, we go by the acronym of MARS, so you hear, you'll hear that all day. Um, we started in uh, June of 06 as a nonprofit um, with the help of dedicated volunteers. And the last, uh, since we've opened since 06, we've rescued close to 10,000 animals. Um, without, the, without the help of our fosters, our volunteers, there's nothing that's, uh, they've done incredible service. Well, let's talk a little more about uh, why you guys are here. The big event is Give to the Max. It's on Thursday, November 14th. And Chad, can you tell us a little more about what that is and how people can help? Um, Give to the Max Day is uh, put together by givemin.org. And they're solely a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits in raising money. Mm -hmm. Can you say that um, website one more time? Uh, GiveMN.org. Okay. Um, and as a nonprofit, they help other nonprofits in getting money. And they put together this great program, Give to the Max Day. And all nonprofits in Minnesota, including educational institutions, will be seeking funds that day. And of course, Mars is looking to get a lot of help, and we're dedicating uh, the funds entirely to the Burt Medical Fund. Mm -hmm. And what is your role in this uh, group, Amanda? Mm -hmm. um, I've actually volunteered with Mars for a very long time. Um, but I worked since with, when did you start? I've been with them since 08. It was shortly after they opened. Nice. I've been with them from the get-go. Um, and I actually work as the practice manager for the vet clinic that we use to do all of the vetting with our dogs. We happen to be the largest, well, they happen to be our largest clients. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot with Mars. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk more about the uh, the event, Give to the Max, on the, the 14th. It's benefiting the BERT uh, Fund, is that right? Is that what it's called? And, yep, the BERT Medical Fund. And that was named after the dog that we saw on the, the video there. And yes. Can you explain a little more how BERT works? Um, well, the BERT Medical Fund, um, BERT was a special case. He came in as hospice. Um, we're not set up to do hospice. Um, we, um, but as, a, as an organization, uh, we pull a lot of animals from high-kill shelters throughout the United States. 
And um, we would try to give everyone a second chance. And a lot of them uh, end up having medical needs. Mm -hmm. And they're high cost medical needs. So the Burt Medical Fund is specifically set aside so we can uh, have that money on hand so we can start pulling those animals and getting them treatment because they're the ones who really need rescue because they're sitting there in pain waiting for treatment because of lack of resources. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a, another video here um, and that's uh, the Tom and Remy video. Does anyone mm -hmm. want to introduce that video here? Um, Tom and Remy are uh, a great story, a great Mars success story. Uh, Remy was due to be euthanized at a high kill uh, shelter. Um, our Midwest Animal Rescue was able to pull him in and um, it's a great success story. Well, well we're going to uh, line that video up right now. So, Dallas, if you can do that, we'll play it. My name is Tom, and this is Remy. Uh, Midwest Animal Rescue Services uh, contacted me back in September of 2010 and told me about this uh, shepherd Labrador retriever coming up from Missouri that had nowhere to go and asked me if maybe I could help foster him uh, while they found him a home. So I took him home with the full intent of fostering him. And uh, really that lasted about three days. And I took him in and I bought him. Uh, I've been involved in the sport of uh, dock jumping uh, for uh, going on uh, 13 years now. I f had a feeling that Remy had some, uh, some abilities in him, so I immediately took him to the water. He didn't really come out of his shell right away. He was kind of shy on the dock. His first event was in uh, the spring of 2011, and he actually did pretty good. He actually qualified for the world championships were held in Canton, Ohio that year. And lo and behold, he won. He beat the three-time world champion and took home the, uh, the big trophy that weekend. And uh, not long after that, we went up to Bismarck, North Dakota, where he completely smashed the world uh, record, and he's been owning that world record ever since. So he's getting to be uh, quite the uh, quite the champion dock jumper, and he's getting to be very well known across the country and across the world as a, a, an ambassador for, for rescue dogs. Many, many people approach me and ask me where I got him, how can they get a dog like him? They're asking me if I, would, if I could breed him, as he, you know, can he produce puppies? And I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, you go to the folks like Midwest Animal Rescue Services, and they have dogs like this uh, available all the time. There's diamonds in the rough like this all over. We're very lucky to have each other, uh, I feel I did my part saving his life, and I think he's going to reward me more than I could say, more than I could ever wished for. Thank you, Mars. That's uh, pretty. That's pretty amazing. Remy is a beautiful animal, beautiful dog, and. Were you saying that Remy was actually scheduled to be euthanized? Yep, he was scheduled to be euthanized in a, a high kill shelter, and um, he's one that would actually have benefit from the Burt Medical Fund. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Amanda can explain what treatment he had. Heartworm treatment is a very long process. It's about eight months, um, and one of the medications that's used is actually arsenic-based, so it's very hard on the dogs and it's very expensive. So he actually went through that as well, and he's a large dog, so that makes it even more expensive. Um, a dog his size probably runs four to $500 to treat just the heartworm infection, which are basically worms that live inside their heart, and they feed on their blood and just hang out there until they're treated. So they will stay with them forever until they're treated, which can lead to death as well so well wow. and what a what an amazing story that is about Remy so Rick when people are donating uh, for instance a uh, give to the max on November 14th uh, as a give MN uh, dot org uh, they're actually benefiting animals exactly like Remy and they're fostering that relationship between That's Tom correct, and Remy. Yeah. so it looks like it's a, a mutual mm -hmm. It benefit is. Right, there. Uh, right now, our largest expense with Midwest Animal Rescue, obviously, is the medical of the dogs. Um, last year alone, we spent over $350,000 uh, for our animals, over animals for medical uh, reasons. And because of that, uh, we are tr striving this year, over the next 12 months, to uh, try to raise $250,000 for this fund that we'll use when we intake an animal that has some sort of medical condition, mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and, and use that money to, uh, to keep the animal alive and, and to give them a good life. Mm -hmm. um, that's 
basically the beginning of the Minnesota, you know, our, our the Give to the Max Day. That's mm -hmm. where we're going to start this fundraising effort on the Give to the Max Day. So what are what are some of the costs associated with, uh, you know, keeping these animals Well, alive? right now, um, uh, anything from $5 will be able to get a leash and a collar. If mm -hmm. you want to donate $25, I can get you a bed uh, or a dog, a dog bed. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get up $100 or spay and neuter. A uh, $250 donation will be able to help uh, with most medical conditions for their basic medical care. Uh, $500 or more, um, $500 could uh, be used for life-saving uh, surgery for any animal. Um, $1,000 could be uh, used to rescue four animals mm -hmm. uh, from these terrible uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. Parvo treatment. Mm, and uh, parvo treatment, like Amanda said. And with, um, with, with Green Veterinary Services, that relationship allows our dollars, our donation dollars, really to go a long way, Tony. Um, retail vending is very expensive for rescue. Our relationship with Green Veterinary Services allows us to get these this critical medical care at a, at a, at a reduced rate that you, than you get anywhere else. So mm -hmm. $250,000 for us will go an extremely long way. Mm -hmm. So uh, Amanda, for people who are watching that are debating whether or not they should donate uh, for Give to the Max on November 14th at givemn.org, say they don't they're not a huge, huge animal lover. You know, not everybody loves pets or wants to have pets. Uh, can you explain a little more about the benefits to even people who don't own pets to, uh, you know, society and, and locally to St. Paul by, by oh, donating and contributing? <laughs> I mean, yep. what, pr what problems are we uh, preventing here? The spay and neuter programs that you see around Minnesota a lot are probably the biggest. Mm -hmm. um, we actually, with Green Vet Services, we're actually closed two days out of the week to do a spay and neuter day for Mars. Um, where we do anywhere from 10 to 15 surgeries a day just to help them um, at a very discounted cost. And so the spaying and neutering really helps to keep the strays and that kind of stuff down. That's why we're so supportive of it. Any animal that goes out has to be spayed and neutered. We highly recommend that all pets in the home are spayed and neutered mm -hmm. so that there's no reproducing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get a pet, we highly recommend rescue or a well-qualified breeder, mm -hmm. um, pet stores, that kind of stuff. You run into a lot of medical issues where there's dogs with parvo and really bad diseases such as the renal failure. Um, parvo treatment's kind of coming up again. It was down for quite some time, but we're definitely and rescue world, we're seeing it a lot more, um, which can be really dangerous for the public as well, because then all the community dogs are potentially exposed to it too. So keeping that under control is a big thing as well, especially in the rescue world. Mm -hmm. So, Chad, do you have anything you want to add to how people donating uh, benefits? Well, um, because you mentioned part of it, I have to bring up uh, Green has an enormous success rate, 90%, uh, which is well above the national average. That's Green mm -hmm. Veterinary Services. Mm -hmm. That's a credit to what their care. 98% success 90, rate of? 90%. Out of the dogs that we've actually had in for Parvo, um, mm -hmm. we have a huge, we're very connected with our patients mm -hmm. is how I like to put it. We are very hands-on. We firmly believe that somebody should be with them from the time that they come into the clinic till they're ready to go. Parvo takes a lot out of them and you can't actually treat the virus because it is a virus that has to run its course. So basically all you can do is provide supportive care for them and help them to get through it. So part of that is, to us is staying with them. So we actually provide 24 hour care for the most part um, with the rescue dogs. Retail public people are a little bit different. Um, we're still open to the public for low cost vetting to help the community out. So there, we've treated probably four or five retail ones, which I find high just for the public. Um, but all of them have done very well. They actually did the treatment in home um, because it is extremely contagious. So if it's able to do it that way, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier on the dog too. They're with their family, they're in a home environment. So we have a lot of success with Parvo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's good. We like it. And, we, and she also just touched on something I would like to bring up with Mars. Mars is not a shelter. Yeah. Uh, it's a foster-based organization. So one of the uh, benefits with Mars, I feel, is um, the fosters will be able to talk to the potential adopters. They know the dog intimately. They understand the, anything that any kind of habits the dog may have. Our success rate at Midwest Animal Rescue for a return of an animal is around 1% which we're very proud of. So when a dog goes home at Midwest Animal Rescue, they stay oh. home. Mm -hmm. 
and um, if there's any issues, for an example, uh, behavioral or whatever the case is, Mars would also help the adopter with training, things like that. So our goal is to keep the dog home and not come back into the system. Mm -hmm. So uh, just uh, touched on that because the, the parvo was treated at someone's home. Mm. We so. actually just had a litter of parvo puppies mm -hmm. that they are now officially off treatments and adopted and home. Um, there was a U-care going around for it and actually all of the, because it's expensive to treat, but with that U-care, everything was raised to for that one litter. So mm -hmm. all of them are now home and happy and, and healthy, living life. <laughs> mm. so. so that's where some of the funds are. Most of the, not most, all of the funds <laughs> would be used for medical case dogs. So okay. um, there's a lot of rescues and nonprofits that cannot afford, um, and it's, it, they, uh, they get euthanized. They can't afford some of these uh, things like a cruise ship repair. Uh, it's very expensive. But with the relationship with Green Veterinary Services and this fund, we'll be able to give a dog a, a new life and a new home mm -hmm. that most uh, most won't have a shot at that. So give to the max day. It's Thursday, November 14th. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you guys have a goal for funds raised on that particular day? Uh, We're shooting yeah. for $20,000 that day. Um, okay. And it'll be and added to a total. this is a 24 hour period, yeah, right? Yeah, correct. It's a 24 starts hour. It starts at uh, midnight. 12 midnight on uh, November morning, early morning, November 14th and runs to 11.59 p.m. And throughout that entire time, um, there's certain hours, the five to six o'clock hour, uh, we're going for a golden right. ticket, which is a basically a competition. Mm -hmm. um, we raise the most in an hour, we're gonna get an extra thousand dollars at it. So there's oh, wow. opportunities for people to really, if they donate that, they can have uh, those tickets run. And it actually, they pull it out like a lottery. So if you get a whole bunch of tickets, uh, or a whole bunch of entries that, during that hour, donations during that hour, um, you have more chances of getting your name pulled out. So somebody could donate $25 and it turns into a thousand twenty-five dollars, and that's why I give to the max. It's such a big day. That's that's huge. Mm -hmm. And you know, Rick, something that you said really resonated with me is, you know, five dollars buys a, a leash, or yep. twenty-five dollars can get you this or this. And uh, you know, a lot of people think I don't have that much money. I can't donate a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks. But really, I mean, a five-dollar donation could put you over that level and could mm -hmm. actually increase Definitely. that mm -hmm. donation by Definitely. twenty-five people that donate five dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And exactly. it, it, it's not that much. And do the, do the uh, people who donate, do they get some type of a tax break? Or Yes, yeah, so it's a 501c3, okay. so they do get a tax donation slip. So we're at the end of the year here. Yep. It's, you know, for those of you who maybe uh, haven't for paid enough in taxes. Yeah, have paid enough in tax. Good time to look yep. to exactly. donate to a great cause and yep. Correct. Uh, everything like that. So mm -hmm. you want to give one last uh, kind of plea to well, ask the, for? You know, and one of the unique things, and one of the reasons that's named the, by named the Burt Medical Fund is Burt was my foster, um, and um, Amy and uh, Susan and Rick chose to honor Burt by naming it after him. And the reason it was named after him is, you know, one of the things that I can say about Burt is Burt was extremely lucky. He was born um, without functioning kidneys. He was never going to have a whole a, a full life. Um, and even though he passed away at 14 months, um, he was loved throughout his entire life. And um, it's an honor of him for those who are be there's, uh, those that are sitting in uh, kennels at these shelters that are suffering mm. and in pain. And now we're going to be able to give medical treatment in honor of somebody who was actually able to find love their whole life and f to help those guys find love for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And Tony, and there is a percentage of animals obviously like that. 90% um, of our animals, uh, they come on in no matter what, you're going to need about $250 of medical care when you adopt from Mars. Uh, all their shots, they're spay or neutered. Uh, that's microchipping. Uh, microchipping. That's what, what the $250 kind of donation can do. Um, but when there's cases, uh, there we, we have 10% of our animals that are basically in, in dire straits. Mm -hmm. And um, it isn't the fact that they're not fixable. They are. If you just had some funds, these dogs can live a long, healthy life. Mm -hmm. And we don't want people, uh, um, you know, a lot of people have to give up their dogs because of, the, because of that reason. Well, uh, before we end, we have one last uh, video, but before Chad introduces the last video, I just sure. uh, can you just let everyone know one, one last time, Rick, how, how they can help on November 14th? On November 14th, you can go on to MidwestAnimalRescue.org, and you can click uh, there. You'll see a, a website or a, a link. Um, and then, Chad, I think you know a couple more. What else What else would you be able to go? Uh, Razoo? Yep, it's yeah. go to Razoo. If you go to the GiveMN dot org website okay. and search Midwest Animal Rescue, it pops right up. Yeah. Um, you'll see that wonderful video of Tom and Remy. It's the first 
that you see um, on it. Um, then the second video is about medical fun, and then the third video that's coming out. Sure, if you okay. want to uh, introduce uh, the last video here is Kipper and Hope. And who, mm -hmm. who's Kipper and Hope? Uh, Kipper and Hope is just a standard success story of Mars. I mean, uh, two dogs that uh, were from high kill shelters that are now um, in loving homes. They, they were due to be euthanized. Now they get to live, and it's an uh, I mean, and Rick already hit on it earlier, thanks to our volunteers and fosters. I yeah. mean, we have an amazing group of people that none of this would be possible without them. Well, we Amanda, the Chad, and Rick. Uh, base too. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? We have the largest volunteer base, too. Oh. Yes. So we do a lot of volunteering, lots of fosters. So. Yeah, Great. without them, mm -hmm. we couldn't do this. Great. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, Amanda, Chad, and Rick, I, I certainly appreciate you guys coming on the show and explain more about Mars and give to the Max Day on November 14th. And we're going to play that video now, but thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on. And thank you. And thank you, Tony, come for on allowing again. us to, uh, to, to and Next time, I think we should bring some of the, the <laughs> animals. Yeah. Yes, we, we definitely about, will. Right? Definitely. So. Well, thank you very much, Tony, for Thank you, and us. best yeah. wishes on the 14th. Okay. So Thank you. We'll line up uh, this last video here, Kipper and Hope. Dallas, if you can do that. Hi, we're the Hogs, and this is our rescue dog, Kipper. Kipper came to us from Missouri, where he was found in an abandoned house with eight of his siblings and his mother. Unfortunately, the owner of the home, to our understanding, was either put in prison or jail, and uh, the dogs were left to fend for themselves for two weeks. Luckily for us, the Sheriff's Department got involved, and great organizations like Mars, we got lucky because Mars took over. I was actually the first one to go meet Kipper, and it established a certain bond between him and I. He clings to me, as you can see, like this. He becomes my headrest at night on the back of the couch. And uh, he's a heating blanket to both my wife and I. He likes to put his head right on the pillow he's between very us. Cuddly, yeah. Yes, he's absolutely cuddly. Um, you can tell that he had a, a rougher history based on how much love he does give our family. And I can't imagine what life would be like without him right now. And uh, we absolutely want to thank Mars for the program and the wonderful job that they do. If it weren't for Mars, we uh, wouldn't have Kip in our life today, and we're just so uh, gracious that he's part of our family. Thank you, Mars! Um, I'm Kevin, this is Aurora, and this is Hope. About two years ago, I was decided I wanted to look for a dog, and I had never rescued one from Mars before. So I went on their website, and I was looking through a whole bunch of them, and Hope's picture was on there. She was left outside for a while and then was kept in a basement and then she was rescued and brought into Mars. Um, I watched the videos actually on the website and fell in love with her. So I came in here and she wouldn't even come near me when we were introduced. She would hide in the corner and stay by the wall. I was a little nervous about bringing her home because it was just me at home at that point. Um, but I decided I might as well give it a shot. Now, when she got home, she was a little timid for a while, for about a week. And then ever since then, she's just been loving and fun, and she's been one of the best dogs I've ever had. And this is probably my sixth dog in my whole life. I think she's one of the best things that's ever happened to us. So we just came in today to say thank you to Mars, because it's a wonderful addition to our family. Thank you, Mars. <laughs> dogs bring joy and happiness into our lives. Help bring some joy and happiness into a dog's life by giving today. All right, well and we uh, we're going to uh, just end the show here uh, with uh, the video from Mars again, the people from Midwest Animal Rescue Services. A reminder that they have their big fundraiser. It's Give to the Max Day, and that's on Thursday, November 14th. And uh, you can give uh, uh, or donate by going to the website givemn.org. And I encourage you to uh, check that out. And uh, we're going to just play this right now. So, Dallas, uh, if you could line this up. And, and we're not going to actually come back because we're going to run out of time here. But I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Tony Hernandez Show. We broadcast live every Saturday from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on SCC Television Studios in White Bear Lake. Uh, we also replay on our YouTube channel, which is Tony Hernandez Show. If you're watching the show from YouTube right now, we'd appreciate it if you would subscribe and also share uh, the video with uh, your friends and family. I'd like to thank State Senator Dave Thompson, Minnesota governor's candidate, for coming on at the beginning of the show. Thanks again to the people of uh, Mars, Midwest Animal Rescue. And finally, uh, thank you to Justin Bloyer, city councilman from Lake Elmo. Thank you all for tuning in. May God bless you. May God bless America. And vaya con Dios.
Midwest Animal Rescue and Services began in 2006 with the mission to help dogs that were otherwise overlooked and left behind. It began with the first two dogs, Candy and Cookie, and it continues today with the 450 animals in our system. We've spent over $350,000 last year alone providing rescue, refuge, and rehabilitation to these wonderful and deserving companion animals. But now we need your help. We need your help in supporting our mission of caring for these unwanted, overlooked, and left behind dogs. To provide them with the resources they need at a second chance at life. To provide them the opportunity to shine and be the amazing companions they so desperately desire to be. We are in the process of looking for dollars to rebuild our medical fund, which we have named after Bert, a very special dog. Hi, my name is Chad Burgess and I'm the Director of Volunteer Services for Midwest Animal Rescue. I want to thank you for considering Midwest, uh, considering Mars for a donation today um, on Give to the Max Day. This Give to the Max, we are focusing on a very special fund. All the proceeds from Give to the Max will be going to the BERT Medical Fund. BERT came to Mars uh, just under five months old in October 2012. Mars was able to find out that BERT was diagnosed with bilateral renal dysplasia and uh, was given the optimistic prognosis of living until he was 10 months old. He stayed with us until he was 14 months old. Bert had the type of personality that would fill the room. Bert always wanted to run, wanted to play, and always wanted to do things on his own terms. When we first found Bert was coming to our home, I, I called Carla um, and let her know what was going on. Um, I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, brought, we brought Bert in our home knowing that he did not have a big future. Bert always knew love throughout his entire life, from a surrendering owner's home to our home. But there's animals who are sitting in shelters, um, some in pain, waiting for medical treatment. Um, medical treatment that is often out of the scope for nonprofits. And that is our goal with the Bert Medical Fund. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Jackie. I remember the night that my dad brought Jackie home as a foster. Um, he had brought her directly to my bedroom to shelter her from our other three dogs and she curled up on the bed that I had for her and I just kind of felt that bond right away. She had been hit by a truck and her former owners couldn't afford the cost of the surgeries and I knew that I needed to stay emotionally detached because it wasn't really a good time for me to adopt a dog but I wanted to care for her, you know, while she was going through this hard time. Both of her back legs were broken and she needed surgeries to repair uh, her hips, both of her back hips, and one of the bones in her leg. Mars provided the surgeries. They performed um, an FHO. And it's where they take the ball of the hip if it's been damaged, cracked, or broken. They'll actually shave it off and they'll insert it into the hip socket to create a false joint. Um, her recovery was about four months. It she had the pins in her leg for about six weeks. When, uh, when both of her hind legs healed and she had the bracket removed and the pins removed, uh, she was spayed and um, she was actually adopted out. And it was less than a week when the person who adopted her decided it wasn't a good fit, so she came back to my parents' house mm -hmm. and I told my dad that I couldn't say goodbye again and I needed to keep her. Now she's doing great. We take her to the dog park and she